Hi, I'm Mark. I used to be a senior artist at Blizzard and now I teach art for a living. And this is a new episode of my ongoing weekly series, YouTube Art School. Now, I know you've been self-conscious about your anatomy drawing skills. So today I want to show you the exact steps to go from drawing glorified stick figures to drawing proper characters with proper anatomy and precisely what to practice to get there. By far the most important factor. And you're, you're probably wondering, how can this kind of content be absolutely free? It's not. To continue watching, you'll have to pay the fee of one like or one sub. <gasps> well done, quickly, let's get started. Class is in session, pay attention. Today, we're going to look at the various steps that you should take to study anatomy, to practice anatomy, to avoid wasting time. I've been teaching for many years and this is what has consistently proven to show the most results with my students. Obviously, there are hours upon hours on this topic in my art school program and there's a limit to what I can teach in a short YouTube video, but I think this is a great condensed version with actionable steps that you can take to start seeing results right away, regardless of your current skill level. By the way, just FYI, but I have a nice discount going for the art school program until the end of the month. Check the link in the description to learn more. <gasps> now, talking about those steps, more specifically, we'll go over six steps, six levels, really, six levels of anatomy skill, and more importantly, even what to practice for any given level to effectively level up. If you're a complete beginner, start with level one. You'll see each of these levels build up on skills acquired in previous levels. So the order here or the structure of your studies is important, very important. This structure is usually what's going to be missing in your anatomy studies and often why progress is stalling. So let's not waste any time and get started with the first level. And by the way, you'll find all the different levels uh, marked as chapters in the timeline of the video so you can refer back to it later if needed. Level one is where you should be starting if you're new to drawing characters or if you've just been drawing cartoon characters or manga using other people's recipes. We're looking to build solid foundations first using real anatomy. Of course, we'll be heavily relying on photo references until we reach level six, aka level pro. No references, no input of new information, no input of new information, no learning. Using references is key here, so find yourself some good ones. I'm using photo packs I got on QBrush that I'll link in the description. They're affiliate links, so I get a little cut from each sale to help support the channel. With a bunch of references in hand, the main exercise I recommend at this level is to draw simple volumes like boxes and cylinders over the photos directly, like this. Look at the position of the limbs and the body and try to draw simple volumes that match the same perspective as best as you can. You can always check if you did a good job by removing the photo ref to reveal the volumes you drew. If they look like a character in the same pose on their own, then you nailed it. If it doesn't look like anything, when the photo backdrop disappears, and then uh, you'll know that you need a little more practice. This exercise's emphasis is on observation first, but also on drawing simple volumes and perspective. Two of the most valuable skills that you'll need to draw characters with good anatomy. Once your cylinder man can hold its own without the reference, then you're ready to move on to level two. Congratulations. At level two, we'll be focusing on gesture drawing another building block towards our goal of drawing anatomy accurate characters. Starting at level two, all the following levels will only add new content to practice. So unlike level one, gesture drawing, along with the rest of the video, will be things that you want to keep practicing forever. I might be higher level than level two, but I still practice gesture drawing regularly. The same goes for level three, four, five, and six. We'll just keep adding to the exercises from here until we reach max level. Now, I'm sure most of you are familiar with gesture drawing. What we'll want to practice at this level are short, medium, and long poses using photo references. The different times will force you to observe different things. And of course, the goal here will be to look at the reference and try to draw it as best as you can within the time frame. At first, you'll want to focus on short poses. Around two minutes is pretty good. Don't expect your drawing to look great. Come on, we're only at level two, but you should at least aim to draw glorified stick figures. I'll usually start with the main lines of gesture for the body, always making sure 
that I use curved lines to focus on the energy of the pose. Avoid straight lines like the plague or I'm gonna call the police. You can start with a reference right next to your drawing area and increase the difficulty by moving the reference away, maybe to a different screen or scaling it down so that it's not the same size as what you're drawing. Once you've highlighted the overall gesture, you can start to add some meat to the bones by giving the body parts their volume. As this gets easier, you'll want to increase the time and focus more on the details like the hands and the feet because those add a lot to the gesture of a character. All the while trying your best to focus on clean, deliberate lines. If you're looking to improve your line arts in particular, by the way, I have a popular tutorial here at the top right corner of the screen that you might want to check out. Link down below as well. Now, as you practice gesture drawing, the number of lines you use to draw the full figure will start to go down, speed will pick up, and you'll be able to achieve more with the same time limits. And that's a good sign that you're ready to move on to level 3. Well done. At level 3, you should be able to somewhat draw characters that look decent while using references. The characters won't have much detail, but should at least have correct proportions thanks to all the gesture drawing practice that you've had so far. At this level, we'll start to distance ourselves from the references and focus on construction. Essentially, a simple way to draw the human body that will allow you to draw simple poses from imagination. Ooh. We'll practice drawing the construction recipe with a heavy reliance on references to get the pose and proportions right at first, and slowly, as you build more confidence, you'll be able to distance yourself from the references and draw cool poses on your own. But that'll take some practice. And to learn how to construct your characters, I'll refer you to the male and female construction videos that I made recently up here in the top right corner of the screen and down below. Construction is still very much focused on proportions at getting us to a point where we can draw simple characters to which we'll then be able to add muscle and bone information later at level four. The good news is that the hardest part is behind us at this point. At level four, the goal will be to take the constructions that you're now able to draw with and maybe without references and slap some muscles on it. There are a lot of muscles to learn, so we'll focus on the big groups of muscles first at this level. I also recommend that you work on poses that aren't too complicated without too much foreshortening. That adds a thick layer of difficulty and I'd save that for the next level if I were you. The best kinds of references that I can recommend at this level would be male and female bodybuilder photos where you can clearly see the muscle definition. You want models that are ripped, shredded. Practice drawing the bigger muscles or the muscle groups particularly those that impact the character's silhouette. Ignoring the small ones. We'll get to that later. Also learn their names. It might be counterintuitive, but it will allow you to draw them better in the sense that it will help you remember the muscles better. Level four is a big milestone where you should aim to draw characters with good proportions and accurate-ish muscle definition, maybe even from imagination to some degree, but always keep the references close. This level might also feel like you've just opened a Pandora's box since there's a lot to learn when it comes to muscle and bone anatomy. But worry not, a lot of artists will kind of stop here and just polish the skills acquired so far. That includes a lot of professional artists. When I joined Blizzard, for example, I would have considered myself level four then, yet I still got the job. And side note, but a few years ago, I created a full anatomy model that you can rotate around and study for free. Maybe a little help. I'll put a link to that down in the description below. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're now at level five, and that's a different beast. This level is important if your goal is to reach level six, <laughs> AKA level pro, at which point we'll be able to draw pretty much any character in any pose from imagination. At level five though, you'll still be relying heavily on anatomy references, and the focus should be to tackle all the surface muscles and become familiar with most of the bones of the body. At this level, you'll do a lot of detailed studies, study names, muscle insertions and origins, body parts foreshortened and in harder poses, maybe even studying the differences in the muscles when they are flexed or extended. This is a career long process and a level in which you'll be doing a lot of this kind of studies while still practicing what we've seen in level two, three, and four. This might seem like the most boring thing ever to some of you, but as you start learning more about anatomy, this gets incredibly fascinating. And if you're anything like me, I've only developed more interest for anatomy over the years as I expand my knowledge. The more I know, the more I want to know. It's really like a big puzzle in your mind. And as you're progressing, you slowly see it 
take shape and everything starts to make a lot more sense. It makes you want to complete it. At least it did for me. Now, this is what brings us to level pro. At this level, you're just having fun. There's possibly still a lot that you don't know about anatomy. It's certainly my case. But the puzzle is mostly complete at this point and you're free to construct characters in a lot of different poses and can draw the anatomy from most angles and most scenarios. This is also the level at which you'll have the most success pushing the limits of anatomy with your style. You should be able to take more liberties while still keeping everything logical and aesthetic. If you're anywhere below level 4, I would cautiously stay away from that. But um, yeah, the use of references never goes away though. At this level, you might be drawing mostly from imagination, but you'll still always want to pull up a ref the second something isn't 100% clear. That should be how you approach it. But at the same time, if you're at that level, there's no way that you're watching this video. So let's stop right here and wrap up. The levels I talked about here should also be used as a rough measure of your skills, letting you know based on what we saw today, if you're ready or not to move up a level. Moving up a level should be challenging, but not overwhelming. If it's the latter, go back and practice the previous level some more. And that's all I got. Did this help? I hope it did. Let me know in the comments. What do you think is your current level? Do you have favorite artists that are level pro that you'd recommend we check out? I'm always looking for more inspiration, so if you do have any, comment down below. I'm curious. And lastly, don't forget to check out the description for all the links that I mentioned and check out my art school pro-